Okay, so today we're going to use Adobe Illustrator to design a nameplate. Then we'll use the Epilogue laser printer to cut it out on a piece of small wood. So I'm showing you right now both the photo of my finished product once it's been cut out, as well as, well as the Adobe Illustrator file. A couple things going on right here. It's kind of hard to tell, but there is a very thin outline going around the nameplate. It's so thin, in fact, that it's kind of hard to see. Um, you'll see right now it's set at 0 .001 inches, um, and that's so the laser cutter will know that instead of just making uh, dark marks here, it actually cuts through. Um, so we're going to make sure that we make that outline the uh, the proper uh, the proper width. Actually, 0 .001 won't be it. It's actually going to be something a little bit different. So go ahead and start up Adobe Illustrator. Um, you can do that by coming down to the search bar, and if you start typing in Illustrator, it'll pop up very quickly. Uh, it'll bring you to a if it doesn't bring you to a new document, just go ahead and do File New, give it a name, I'm going to call this, and I'll make this video so I know which one this is. Uh, yours doesn't have to be 24 by 12, something like uh, 12 by 12 is fine. We're going to go ahead and make sure the units, they should say points right here. Actually, never mind, changed my mind. Uh, inches 12 by 12. Color mode needs to say RGB. Go ahead and make the raster effects 300 PPI. Um, keep everything else the same and press OK. And you'll start out with this nice fresh clean artboard in Adobe Illustrator. Okay so before we forget we're gonna go up to the edit button and find preferences. If you're using a Mac instead of doing that up in the upper left hand corner there's gonna be a place that says um, Illustrator CC. Click there and you'll find the preferences there. But either way, you're looking for the units preferences. And we're only going to change one of these. Uh, leave the general in inches, but the stroke, we're going to change to points. We're going to press OK. And now you'll see up here where it says stroke, it changed from inches to PT for points. Now let's jump right in. We're going to grab the rectangle tool. If you don't see the rectangle tool, you might instead see like the ellipse tool or some one of these. They're what's called nested together. Instead of having a button for all of these different shapes, since they're so similar, they're nested together. It, to get to different ones, I click, I left click and hold the button down, and I can come over and choose the one I want. I want the rectangle tool. I'm going to go ahead and click once. Oops, actually, I'm going to click and drag. A general box, we're going to change the size manually here in a second. So I let go, I've created a box, and now I'm going to change the size um, on my own. The important thing is right now, your chain right here is probably clicked together, which means that if I change one of these numbers, the other one's going to change in proportion. That's not what I want. I'm going to unclick the chain so that it's sort of broken here. I'm going to make the width. Let's go ahead and make that 5, and we'll make the height 2. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I am still on the rectangle tool. If I come to the to the artboard here and I click again, I'm going to make a new rectangle. If I just click real quickly, I'm not going to notice, but I'm going to make a really small rectangle. If I want to move this around or do anything else to it, I need to go get the selection arrow. Now I can move it around and do what I want, and I'm not making new rectangles. In fact, if I go over to the layers button over here, and I bring down layer one, I should just see one single layer here, which is the rectangle. If you don't see the layers tab over here, or something is missing, or the screen looks kind of wonky, go up to window, workspace, and do reset essentials. We're in the essentials workspace, and we're just going to reset it. And it should have everything I need over here. If I so choose, I can change the corners of my rectangle. I can make them rounded. I can give them inverted round or I can chamfer them. To do that, I need to go ahead right next door and just go ahead and turn up the radius a, a couple clicks. It's going to go ahead and default into this rounded style, but I can really easily change to another one. And now I can continue to use the arrows to get the shape that I like. More or less. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and grab the text tool, the type tool. So if you don't see this big T, it should be right here, and if you see one of these instead, just go ahead and hold the left mouse down and find the type tool. I'm going to click here in the middle, 
And before I start typing, I know that I'm going to need bigger than a 12 point font. I'm going to go ahead and start with something closer to 60. And I'm going to go ahead and type my name. Then I'm going to click with my mouse and get my whole name selected. And I'm going to go find the font I want. So there are just hundreds of fonts to choose from. Find something interesting. We'll go with that for now. I see that this font, I could make it a bit bigger. I'll go ahead and make it closer to 80. I want to leave some room here for a little picture, so I'm not going to make it take up the entire space here. So now, just like the rectangle tool, I'm still inside the type tool. If I come over here and click on the screen, I'm going to make a new text box, which I don't want to do. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the selection tool, and now I can click and drag this wherever I want it. If I want it centered, which is a good look, I'm going to go up to the window here and find the align window, and it's going to bring this window up. I'm just going to go ahead, you don't have to, I'm going to go ahead and dock it right here so I have it when I need it. And what I'm going to do is get both of these two things selected. I've got my name text box and I've got my rectangle. And if you look at these um, little icons, they pretty much show you what they do. We're, we're thinking align here. And if I want them aligned in terms of up and down, this one right here, I'm going to click on it, and while I do, watch what happens. So now they both have the same center line, which means they're centered that way. Now I'm going to click this one, which is going to center them left and right. So watch my name as I do. So now I know my name is perfectly centered inside my rectangle. For this next part, we are going to hop over to Google, and we're going to go find a piece of clip art that has something to do with something that we like, an interest, a hobby, whatever. Um, so for example, if you are a football guy, go ahead and click football. I'm going to change the search so that I'm looking at images. And I'm going to refine this search even further. I'm going to come over to search tools. Okay. I'm going to click on size. I'm, look for, I'm going to look for at least a medium sized image. Then I'm going to go to color and I'm going to click on black and white. And then I'm going to go to type, and I'm going to choose clip art. So what we are looking for is a simple black and white clip art image. So something like this would be fine. Something like this will be fine. The laser cutter is going to find any dark area, and it's going to burn that into the wood so that the dark areas are actually dark on the piece of wood. So something like this football would actually work pretty well. So I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to click on it and it's going to get larger. And it was kind of subtle, but after a couple seconds, it actually got clear. Um, if it doesn't get clear, um, if it's still kind of fuzzy around the edges, that means that the school firewall is blocking that picture, and you're not going to be able to get a very good image. So you're going to have to go ahead and find something else. This one got clear, so I'm good to go. I'm going to click over here on View Image, which is going to give me the biggest possible image. I'm going to right click save image as. It's going to go in the downloads folder, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a smart name. I'll call it football, and now it's saved. I can hop back into Illustrator. I'm going to go up to the file menu, and I'm going to click place. I'm going to be placing this image in my file. I'm going to scroll down. I can see it's called football. I'm going to click on it. When you do, be careful that this link box is not checked. You want it to be not checked. We want this file to be embedded and not linked. I'm going to go ahead and press the place button. You'll notice that I'm actually zoomed in already. Um, you can zoom in and out by holding down the control button and pressing the plus key to zoom in and the minus key to zoom out. And now what I need to do is draw a box that's going to be the size of the football. We can change it later so it's not that big of a deal. I'm going to click and drag. And when I do, it creates that piece of clip art to the size that I specified. And it's on there, but it's not quite right. Um, and to make my point, I'm going to do this real fast. So you'll see, you would kind of expected that this white area was actually nothing, uh, but it's not the case. What it actually is, is this football is actually has a big white rectangle behind it. So you would hope that you'd be able to see through those white areas uh, to the name underneath, but you can't do that yet. Um, to make my point, you don't have to do this, but I'm going to press Control y which brings me into um, outline mode, and you can see that I have just a big box here. It's just this big box. I'm going to click Control y again. What we're going to do is we're going to get rid of that big white box behind the football. 
with this football selected like it is now, I'm going to go up to Object, I'm going to go to Image Trace, and do Make and Expand. And what it does is it actually traced all the lines around the football. Um, it made them paths, actually. I'm going to go ahead and get my Magic Brush tool up here, Magic Wand tool, rather. And up in here, inside my football image, but in the white portion, I'm going to click. And nothing's really going to happen, but now I'm going to press the delete key on the keyboard. And what I just did was I got rid of all of the white areas. And I'll prove it to you by moving the football like this. And now you'll notice you can actually see through the white areas to what's underneath. That's what I'm looking for. If I press Control y to go back into outline mode, You'll see now I actually have the outline of a football where before I just had a big white block. At this point, if I want to sort of move some things around, I could do that if I want to make some, some space for the football to make it larger. What we don't want to have is we don't want to have different lines intersecting. So I don't really want to have this happening. Even though I can see through it, it's going to really confuse the laser cutter, and that's going to be a problem for me. If I press Control y None of these lines should be intersecting with other lines. At this point, we're going to go ahead and prepare our file to be laser cut. And these steps are really important. If you don't do this properly, you will not get your uh, name tag printed because the laser cutter will not know what's going on. First of all, this border around, um, around the name tag, it's actually technically a rectangle that we sort of squished the corners around on. I'm going to get it selected like it is now. And I'm going to go up to Object, I'm going to go to Shape, and I'm going to click on Expand Rectangle. And before I do that, I want to point something out. When I have it selected, right now, up here in the top left-hand corner, it says I have a rectangle selected. Once I do Object, Shape, Expand Rectangle, it should say Path. If it doesn't say Path, you have not done it correctly. So now that this is a path, I need to do a couple things to it. First off, this first box is called the fill color. Right now, the box is full of white. You can't really tell because it's on the bottom. Um, but I don't want it full of white. So I'm going to click this little red slash. Now it has no fill. The next one to it is the stroke, which is the outline color of my actual rectangle, or my path now. I'm going to click here. I'm going to click on when you hold your mouse over, it should say RGB red. I'm going to double click on it, actually. It's really important that this top number is 255, so it's got full red, zero green, and zero blue. It is as red as red can be. I'm going to press OK. When I click off of it, I can still see it now, but I won't for much longer. So I'm going to erase the one point thing, and I'm going to press zero. I'm sorry. I'm going to press point. 0, 2, 4, and press enter. It's going to become much harder to see if you can see it at all. The line is so thin that it doesn't really show up very well. That's fine. I want to point out one more time. It is 0 0.024, not 0 0.24, 0 0.024. If you don't do this right, I'm not going to print your nameplate out for you. OK, now you really have one last choice. And that's whether or not you want the letters of your name to actually be cut out or if you just want them to be engraved. Um, actually, this next step we're all going to do. All of us at this point are going to do this next step, regardless of how you want your nameplate to be cut out. So we are all going to do this next step. We're going to get our type selected. I know I have it selected because up here in the left-hand corner it says type. I'm going to go up to the object menu again, and I'm going to click on expand. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And just like with the football, um, it's going to go ahead and it's going to trace the letters. At this point, everything is sort of set. So if you need to press Control Z to undo and you want to make things bigger or smaller, do it now or forever hold your piece. So I just undid it. I'm back to type. I'm going to go up to Object. And I'm going to do Expand. Everyone's doing that. OK, now, if you want your letters cut out, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give the letters the same stroke that we gave the outline. Because whenever the laser cutter sees a very, very thin red stroke around something, it's going to cut that thing out. So if you want your letters cut out, 
then just go ahead up here. We're going to go back to stroke. We're going to make it red. We're going to go up to fill and we're going to go ahead and give it no fill because we don't need uh, it to engrave before it cuts. And we need to change the stroke to point zero two four. Remember, point zero two four. I'm going to press enter. It's going to become really hard to see, just like the outline is. If at any point you really can't see and you need to see, do what I did earlier and press Control Y to go into outline mode, and you'll see the outlines of everything. Um, at this point, we're pretty much ready to go. Um, like I said, no lines are intersecting each other. Um, I am double checking at this moment that my outline path is red. It's point zero two four. Uh, my name, if I want it cut out, is also red and zero point point zero two four. If I don't want it cut out and I just want it to be engraved like the football is going to be engraved, then I'm, I guess the better thing would be to do would just be to undo a few times to get back to when the text was there, when the text is actually just black. So if I want it to be engraved, I'm going to leave it black. If I want it to be cut out, I'm going to give it no fill and that red stroke. At this point, we are ready to go. We are going to go to File, Save As. We're going to save it as an Adobe Illustrator file. I'm going to press Save. This window is going to pop up. See how on mine, this option of include linked files is grayed out. I can't choose it. That's because earlier when I placed my football image, I made sure that link box was unchecked. If for some reason this is available to you, it's white like the rest of these, the box has to be checked. If the box isn't checked, then your picture is not going to come with the file. Um, we need to make sure that it is included with, with the file. So at that point, you can press OK. Um, and wherever you saved this Illustrator file to, mine's in the Downloads folder, this is the file you need to send me, not a screenshot. The actual Adobe Illustrator file needs to be sent to me. At that point, I'll take it. I'm going to combine them all onto one big Illustrator file. And before uh, too long, we'll be cutting them out.